The Effect of Different Types of Fruit on the Amount of DNA Produced by Virginia Britt from Jamestown High School. DNA is an important aspect of all life, as it is what gives direction on how all plants and animals should be structured and function. Therefore, it is an important subject to gain knowledge of over time. The learning process is often helped by being able to physically observe and manipulate the subject so that it can be further understood. Extracting fruit from DNA allows individuals to understand the basic process of extracting DNA from any living being by studying the purpose of each required material. It specifically aids students in their learning of DNA as it becomes more understandable when the information comes off the page and into something that one can physically see themselves. It is interesting to compare the amount of DNA in fruit to that of oneself. People have a much greater amount of DNA in, than individual fruits do, but it is, a, it is important to consider that all DNA is made by the same four nitrogen spaces. This experiment leads to more conversations concerning the functions of DNA and the processes in which they are made. If I test several types of fruit to determine which has the most DNA, then the banana will prove to have the most DNA. The independent variable is the type of fruit, and the dependent variable is the amount of DNA extracted. These variables are connected to the rationale described, described above because they both take into account that different living things also have differing amounts of DNA. Additionally, there is a connection between how much DNA people share with the fruit, which is a concept not often thought of, but is still something to consider throughout the experiment. Procedure is to combine water, salt, and dish soap in a small bowl and then stir until combined. Cut the fruit with enough for each trial in equal sized pieces. Place the first piece of fruit in a resealable bag, breaking it for two minutes so that there are no clumps. Place some of the water, salt, and dish soap mixture into the bag and combine for one minute. Use a strainer to separate the remaining pieces of fruit from the liquid in the bag. Add cold isopropyl alcohol to the strained liquid and let sit as everything except for the DNA dissolves and the DNA is clearly seen at the top of the mixture. Place this mixture over a bowl with cheesecloth attached to the top. Pour the mixture over the cheesecloth so that the DNA is separate. Place, um, prepare a scale by placing a small measuring cup on it to zero out on the scale. Take the DNA off of the cheesecloth and, onto the, and into the measuring cup to be measured. While this was not a high-risk experiment, it was important to take safety precautions. These precautions include wearing safety goggles to protect from any harmful chemicals to the eyes, such as dish soap or gold isopropyl alcohol. It was also important to wear gloves and an apron during the experiment to keep myself from getting injured from any of these substances used in the experiment. The hypothesis was correct and that the most DNA was extracted from the banana. The majority of the data on the chart um, are similar in number, which does match with the experimental design and how the fruit uh, was all the same size and treated the same way throughout the experiment. The data from the banana is significantly larger than the rest of the data. The texture of this is different from the strawberry, kiwi, and orange, so the experiment may not have separated the mixture as well as it did the other types of fruit, um, accounting for the difference in data. The DNA produced was in long threads that would stick together, having a white and slightly clear appearance. These results concluded that the, bean, that the banana had the most DNA out of the strawberry, kiwi, and orange. However, this DNA does differ from similar experiments. The textures of the fruit and brands of materials used could work better on some types of fruit than others in extracting data. It is possible that there were inconsistencies in how much the fruit was crushed and combined with the other materials, even though they occurred for the same amount of time, leading to the differences in the data set. The experiment could have been further observed with the use of a scale with a smaller unit and access to a microscope to examine the DNA. However, uncontrolled and unexpected events, these materials were, were unable to be used. My hypothesis was correct in that the most DNA was extracted from the banana. This supports my research question by being able to collect both qualitative and quantitative data. Um, on DNA in this experiment. In the future, I would collect a similar, I would conduct a similar experiment, but focus on one type of fruit, changing the amount of, wa of water, salt, and dish soap solution to see which one extracted the most data. I would also be interested in looking at the DNA under a microscope and compare between the four different types of fruit. And here are five references that I use to complete this slideshow and conduct my experiment. I would like to acknowledge all of my adult supervisors on this project.